Jews and to each of you, my father's children, both through creation as well as regeneration, I greet you today with, with Jesus' joy. I certainly want to thank my pastor as well as the officers for affording me this privilege to come today and to share with you a word from the Lord. From the book of John, chapter number four, Gospel of John, chapter number four. Gospel of John, chapter number four. Sound man, if you can help me with a little volume on the monitor, I'll be all right. John, chapter number four. Commence reading at verse number 46, John chapter 4, that's it, John chapter 4, commence reading at verse 46, reading from the NIV version of the Bible, therein these words are recorded. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus replied, you may go. Your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servant met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, the fever left him yesterday at the seventh hour. Then the father realized that this was the exact time in which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. Go. So he and all his household believed. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to tag this text today for this little while that we have to share together. I want to talk about Jesus to the rescue. Jesus to the rescue. Jesus to the rescue. I wonder today if there is anyone here present in this sanctuary today who's ever had an emergency situation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your situation was so urgent that it pushed you to dial 911. If you've ever had to dial 911, typically the operator that answer the phone will instantly, immediately ask you the question. They want to know what's your emergency. Quite often for the person with the emergency, it is somewhat aggravating and frustrating because the last thing you want to hear is a series of questions when you have an emergency. However, the, the, the operator is not trying to delay 
but the operator is only trying to get the pertinent information in order that he or she will know who to dispatch in order to offer the aid and assistance you need in your emergency situation. And so it is, they, they ask the question, what's your emergency, just, just to get further and deeper insight into your situation. Again, in order that they will dispatch the right person, they want to know, do, do you need the fire department? That they want to know, in essence, do 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 you do you need the police? They that they want to know, do you need EMS? That they want to know, in order that they again can dispatch the right person, in order to offer the right aid and and assistance to you in your emergency situation. And as we have congregated and gathered in this, the hollowed walls of this sanctuary here today, I'm, I'm sure today, in spite of how good you look to me right now, I sense in my sanctified soul in here today, but if somebody in here right now, you have some emergency situation right now. If nothing else in here, as we have gathered in this place here today, Guild Edge, as a church family, we have an emergency right now. Anybody feeling me up in here? We, we, we have an emergency right now because we have a pastor that's dying. Do I have any help in here? And, and what we all ought to do together here today, we ought to bombard heaven in this place. We, we need to tell the Lord, Lord, if we ever needed you, guilt it. If we've ever needed you before, Lord, we show. Are you going to help me in here? We sure do need you right now. And the good news in here today, I promise you, Gilded Edge, if we would bombard heaven, if we would call on God, one thing that I'm glad about with God, it doesn't matter what your emergency is, he's able to fix it. Whatever your emergency is, he's able to rescue you. Is there anybody here ever tried him today? and fighting and feuding. We, we don't need no power struggles and ego tripping. Somebody ought to help me in here. What we need right now is we need the saints of God, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need them calling on God and asking God to raise our pastor up again like you did before. This is a season that if the saints of God, that the guilty as church has ever prayed before, this is a season, this is a time right now that we need to petition our God. And what I, what I like about God, he has such a wonderful history. And what gives me such present confidence that God is able to save D.L. Motley again is because he's done it once before already. And so I'm foolish enough to believe that the same God that rescued him before is able to rescue him right now. Is there anybody here going to help me pray for my pastor? Anybody here going to come from heaven with me and ask God, God, we need you to save our pastor. We need you to raise our pastor. Do it again, God. I got to get back across the bridge, but I got to rush. But I come here today to tell you he's able to rescue. Not only is he able to rescue Pastor Motley, the good news today. Is that the same God? Is able to rescue. He's able to rescue. I don't know what your position, your predicament, your plight is today. But I want you to take comfort and courage in the fact that God is able to rescue. Come on, let's look at this text. Let's lift some practical points and then I'm going to take my seat here from this passage. I want to share with you what the Spirit of God shared with me out of this, the, this particular pericope of Scripture. 
in this fourth chapter, watch this, the fourth chapter of the gospel recorded according to St. John. 